It could not be any nicer. Autumn football is not supposed to be like this. It's like a midsummer day here. Late September, the Lions and Eskimos, second battle of the season here at Commonwealth Stadium tonight. Look at it. Beautiful. Short sleeve weather. And one team that is wheeling and one team that is reeling right now. Oh, and absolutely wheeling is Travis Lule, the CFL's Offensive Player of the Week last week, nearly 400 yards through the air against the Toronto Argonauts. He has been the model of consistency. His counterpart for the Edmonton Eskimos, Stephen Giles, makes his first start since August 27th. The Eskimos losers of three straight, but bear in mind, Stephen Giles, five and three as Edmonton's starter this season. His coach, Cavis Reed, after the team took a drubbing last week in Hamilton, needs Giles to be near perfect to help this ship get back on track. For Mike Benavides, as good as the BC Lions has, have been with that eight and three record, they got to stay ahead of the Calgary Stampeders. They want to get to number nine here today. The BC Lions, the only team they have not defeated in 2012. The men in green and gold. Grant Shaw will kick it off. Tim Brown is back. Marco Iannuzzi is back. Saturday night football in Edmonton. Let's get it started, shall we? Shaw with a kickoff. Tim Brown from the sunlight to the shadows stays on his feet shot and now up near the 49 yard line Tim Brown brought down by Clint Kent a 41 yard return here is the CFL offensive player of the week Travis Lule and his highly touted offense. Well, Travis Lule, as mentioned, has been outstanding, but he's got a number of terrific weapons in his arsenal. And that receiving core, of course, the great G. Roy Simon. Simon over 100 yards last week for the Lions, his second 100-plus yard game of the year, first since week one. Still looking for his first touchdown of 2012, a drought, his longest touchdownless drought of his career. Now Lule has to throw it away. And Corey Boyd, who's in the lineup, makes the catch, but he's on the sideline. No Jerome Messam, by the way, tonight for the Edmonton Eskimos. Boyd draws in. Hugh Charles is the starting running back. And here are the starters to watch defensively for the Edmonton Eskimos. Uh, keep an eye on Joe Burnett. The field corner leads the CFL with five picks, including two against BC, one return for a touchdown in the S victory over the Lions earlier this season. J.C. Sherritt, the man in the middle, leads the CFL with 93 tackles. Demasso Munoz, a force at the weak side linebacker spot as well. The Lions lead the CFL in second down conversion. Here is one here, second and ten. Lule, pocket, and to the sideline. J.C. Sherritt knocks Andrew Harris out of bounds short of the first down. So a quick two and out for the Edmonton Eskimo defense. And an important start for the Edmonton Eskimos after a tough week last week in Hamilton. I know J.C. Sherritt, among others, very anxious to get back to work here this week and redeem themselves after that subpar performance. Joe Burnett, the hero last time with an interception for a touchdown when these two teams met back on week four. Paul McCallum, the veteran, to punt this away. Line drive, kick. Burnett has nowhere to go, and the Lions are very good on special teams coverage. They converge right there. So, Stephen Giles, you're back at the helm. And Stephen Giles making his first start since August 27th. Beat these BC Lions earlier this season, 10 of 16 in that game, aided by 118 yards on the ground from Hugh Charles. He'll be key, and he will be the feature back here today. Along the offensive line, Dylan Steenberg, and back at right tackle, replacing Devin Tyler, who was injured in practice this week. And Hugh Charles in the backfield with Giles, who looks like he's going to the air right away. He will. Giles sideline, and that is way off as he was looking for Shamad Chambers. Let's take a look at the defensive starters to watch. Our starters to watch brought to you by Rona, proud partner of the CFL and its eight teams. Well, we mentioned Dylan Steenbergen in at tackle for Edmonton. He'll have to deal with a couple real good defensive ends. Karan Williams looks to get back on track. He leads the CFL in sacks, but none in his last four games. Cream Smith picking up the slack. He's got five and three forced fumbles along the way. A big one last week on Ricky Ray. Dante Mars part of a very experienced secondary. 
Giles is going to have to throw again. Penalty flag looked like the Lions had jumped offside. Were they drawn? As Giles has nowhere to go. An issue for the Eskimos this year has been coming out of the gate. Like the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they rank the lowest in the league. Only four points on their first possessions. They have yet to score a touchdown on an opening Offside. drive. BC number 94. Five-yard penalty. Pete second down. So they'll keep this drive alive. It'll be second down. Five Good. yards to go. Reem Smith jumping offside. Again, we'll watch number 96, Khalif Mitchell, and number 65, Simeon Rotier, after their incident a few weeks ago. Here's the rush. Giles over the top. And it is caught. And Marcus Henry is brought down. First down up near the 40-yard line. Marcus Henry. Former Kansas Jayhawk. Spent last year with the Eskimos. First Completion for Steven Giles. Well, and I'll tell you what, Simeon Rotier is going to be real sick of seeing Khalif Mitchell because for the second time this season, he's been injured by number 96 for BC. Earlier it was the elbow. Here, gets bull rushed backwards and pushed over Major the pile. Call. Unnecessary roughness. Edmonton 85. 15 yards back, first down. So a penalty, unnecessary roughness after the play. And it'll move the ball back. It'll still be first down. So Rotier is getting up. And of course, that infamous incident back in week four between Rotier and Khalif Mitchell. Khalif Mitchell swung Rotier's arm around and injured his elbow. Mitchell suspended for two games. Take a look back at that incident right in the middle of the scrum. There you see number 96, Khalif Mitchell, the left arm wrenches it against the body. Hyper extending Rotier's elbow. He was out for several weeks. Mitchell suspended, as you mentioned, for two games. This is the first meeting between the two. Tough to say whether that's a matter of ill will, but I mean, that's strictly a football play in that time. But. Four man rush, Giles far side and hauling it in. Markham, Ontario product, Shamad Chambers. Uh, what a great opportunity here for the Edmonton Eskimos first round pick out of Wilfred Laurier. Shamad Chambers getting great opportunity to play that short side wide out spot with the trade of Greg Carr. And the very strong feeling within the organization. They never would have made the car trade if they didn't feel that Shamad Chambers was ready to step in and contribute. Very unique situation for the Eskimos with two Canadian wide out receivers. Second down, one yard to go. Lunge ahead. Something we don't talk about very often, having the non-import wide outs. Happened in the past, but a lot of those short side wide receivers are American receivers. Yeah, the way offenses have evolved, you typically see a Canadian receiver play the, the wide side wide receiver spot. You're going to see a few more balls obviously playing on the short side. It's a shorter throw, a little closer to the quarterback. You get more routes called for you. It's a spot that tends to be reserved for the imports, but it says a lot about what they think of Shamad Chambers. And Nate Kuhorn, the other wide receiver. And good play action there. Kerry Polk. Has another first down. And the Eskimos had the BC Lions fooled as Giles found number 84 in front of Ryan Phillips. Well, we anticipate the Eskimos relying on their quick game a little bit more here today against the BC Lions. That means we should see a lot of touches for Kerry Coke and Fred Stamps, the two primary slots for Stephen Giles within this offense. Virginia product, Kerry Coke from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 12-yard game. Flag here. Referee tonight is Murray Clark. Offside. Eminent number two. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Veteran receiver Fred Stamps. Little jumpy there. 
It'll be first and 15 yards. And again, Stephen Giles back as starter, a 5-3 and three record as the starter for Cavis Reed and the Eskimos. We've had a lot of work with Kerry Joseph. Matt Nichols even played last week. Draw play here for Hugh Charles. Doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. His coach has a lot of faith in yeah, Stephen Giles. The quarterback, by nature of the beast, is going to draw a lot of attention. And for Stephen, he's a very mature individual. He's grown up a lot throughout this season. All of his career, he's faced adversity. And the one thing we spoke about on Sunday in a very long meeting was, Stephen, just be Stephen. Don't worry about the noise around you. And if you just be Stephen, you're going to do the things that's right for this football team and we'll have a chance to win. A few days away from his 30th birthday, Stephen Giles, second down long, fires, and once again, found Kerry Cope, but about a yard and a half, maybe two yards shy of that first down marker. Well, I'm going back to the, the words of Cavis Reed about his starting quarterback. I mean, the big thing he's saying is Stephen Giles doesn't need to go out and win football games by himself. Stephen Giles doesn't need to be Ricky Ray. And the noise he's talking about that he wants him to ignore, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the, the media that are always going to make comparisons between Giles and his predecessor and debate between whether Giles or Kerry Joseph should be the guy under center for this team. The fact is Stephen Giles just needs to manage the game, get the ball to the right people, not turn it over, put his team in a position to win. And stay healthy. Major key, Grant Shaw. Thunderfoot. Tim Brown was faking everybody out. It was way over his head and right through the end zone. The Eskimos will get on the board first here. 75 yard punt from Grant Shaw. Shaw puts the Eskimos on the board. Albeit one point. Eskimo team that had an 8 0 lead in Hamilton a week ago and then were shut out. 51 nothing the rest of the way and the Tiger Cats back on the horse this week against the Lions Gary Johnson is back in the lineup for the BC Lions quick slant pattern picks up half the first down yardage now we take a look back at Travis Lule a week ago against the Toronto Argonauts Equal to season high, putting up 40 passes, completing 24 for nearly 400 yards. Two touchdown passes in that ball game. His usual self as a threat on the ground. He is the guy that makes this BC Lions offense go. Model of consistency, travel with Travis Lula. Johnson, who had a broken elbow back in the lineup for his first game since week three. And another completion to Sean Gore. Certainly one thing that is improved for Travis Lule ever since that dreadful 0-5 and 1-6 and last year is his percentage and the way he delivers the football. Yeah, absolutely. Travis Lule playing the game with a great deal of confidence as is his third-year Canadian slot, Sean Gore, a guy who had a pretty good week himself. Canadian Player of the Week equal to career high with 96 yards through the air in that ballgame. First and ten, close to the midfield stripe. Lule going deep, looking for G. Roy Simon. Overthrew him there. Double coverage downfield. G. Roy Simon coming off a breakout week. Six catches. Over 100 yards for him in that ball game. His first 100-yard game since week one. 62 100-yard games in his career. That's too shy. The record of Alan Pitts. Matched up with Rod Williams. The short side. Second and ten. Deep drop. Look out. Lule fires. Looking downfield for Arlan Roos. And the blitz was on. And back also in that Edmonton lineup, a guy who's gone missing is Marcus Howard with injury. Yeah, Marcus Howard battling his way back. He's going to be a rotation guy on that defensive line, but they'll be thrilled to get some snaps out of their best pass rusher. 
here today. A big hit on Travis Lule on that one from number 91. Marcus Howard missed seven games with a hamstring pull. Sprinted into that backfield there. Got a piece of Travis Lule. Joe Burnett is back at his 12-yard line. High snap, McCallum. The side of his foot, angling it. Burnett. And a penalty flag on the play. Oshie Mwamba was downfield, so too Justin Kahn. Or Alouette and also Calgary Stampeder. It's a chance here with the BC Lions now. Trying to sort this call on the return. Looks like it's going against the Eskimos. On the return, holding, Evan and 55. Illegal block, Evan and 37. That penalty's declined. We'll go half the distance to the goal line. First down. Two penalties, long field for Cavis' Eskimos. Welcome back to the Lions and the Eskimos and Rotier and Mitchell, part two. Here's Ryan Rashog on the sidelines. Ryan? Yeah, Rod, you can only imagine Simeon Rotier's frustration. Uh, was on the injured list for four weeks after that dirty play that had Khalif Mitchell suspended for two games. And now, just a couple of plays into this game, Rotier on the sidelines being looked at by the medical staff. The right leg is being looked at as well as the right ankle. So we'll see whether he gets back in or not. And as for talk of revenge heading into this game, you know, Khalif Mitchell never did apologize for that event. Rotier said he did didn't expect it, but it's a situation where there was some animosity coming in. Yeah, you got a sense of that animosity even in the pregame as Fred Stamps takes the hit screen, gets some help from his friends. Khalif Mitchell was a little amped up. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this. This is Khalif Mitchell before every game. Yeah, that's true. You know, he, he's a big man who plays a little bit angry. He was given the stare down over, though, to the Eskimos. And again, unrepentant after the incident with Rotier. Yeah, but I'll emphasize that Rotier's injury on that play. That was just a good football play. That's what the BC Lions, that's the player that they need Khalif Mitchell to be. A dominant physical force. Hugh Charles ducks under a tackle, slips another, and Hugh Charles is the feature back in this three-headed running back attack with uh, an embarrassment of riches at running back with Jerome Messam who is not in the lineup tonight and also Corey Boyd but Hugh Charles is having an outstanding season Dwayne well he sure is and Hugh Charles has earned the right to be the the feature guy regardless of who else has been here a key guy in that that win over the BC Lions back on July 20th Hugh Charles 118 rushing yards in that ball game also contributed 53 Excuse me, 61 yards through the air. Dangerous pass, but Kuhorn coming off a career game last week in the loss. But there was a penalty flag that flew as that ball flew. Offside, BC number 26. That penalty is declined. First down. Nate Kuhorn. Last week, six catches, 76 yards. Still looking for his first CFL touchdown, Calgary native. Fifth round pick overall last year by the Eskimos. Well, part of that receiver class, the draft of 2011, four receivers taken in the first six picks. Far side again, using Nate Kuhorn again team that has been saddled with injuries including of course to a Darius Bowman and missing a game-changing threat hence yeah. their options that they have right now yeah and obviously Bowman's a big loss when you look at the Edmonton Eskimos numbers over the course of this season they've gotten three 100 yard games from receivers this year one came from a Darius Bowman who's been out since early in the season the other two have come from the running back Hugh Charles Red Stamp still looking for his first 100-yard game. Hard to believe we're saying that. 11 games in. Giles takes off. Steven Giles. Run 
Jones for a first down. And Anthony Reddick went airborne. And he's slow to get up. Well, Hugh Charles, the running back, steps up. He's got Anthony Reddick coming off the edge on the blitz. Good recognition by Charles. Good job to finish his block. Rough landing for the BC Lions strong side linebacker. Reddick yes. is all right, gets back to the huddle. <laughs> Taking down to four minutes left, opening quarter. Just a single on the board. Sixth play of this drive that started deep in Edmonton territory. Give again to Charles. Trying to find the right edge. Minimal gain at best. Hugh Charles, the former Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Well, Hugh Charles will be a focal point in terms of the BC Lions defensive game plan in this football game. He was the Eskimo's biggest offensive threat. As I said, in that July victory, only 150 yards passing for the S for Stephen Giles in that ball game. Giles, by the way, well ahead of that pace already, 71 yards through the air here today. Seven of eight so far, and make it eight of nine. Again, Nate Kuhorn, third reception for him, but that's going to be short. It'll be third down, and they'll have to boot it away. Stephen Giles, unlike Kerry Joseph, who is obviously got the pedigree as a quarterback, a former outstanding player in the league and a great cup champion. Stephen Giles gets rid of the ball a lot quicker than Kerry Joseph does. Oh, well, he typically does, and also far less likely to run than Kerry Joseph as a result. Spiraling kick, two returners. And Tim Brown is swarmed. Lions will bring their offense back to the field here at Commonwealth. Well, week three matchup tomorrow. Tom Brady and the Patriots. Ray Lewis and the Ravens. Live coverage underway. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TSN, TSN Radio, NFL Sunday Night Football. CFL Saturday Night Football here in Edmonton tonight. Rockless crowd. Beautiful weather. Western rivals. Travis Lule, Lions first and 10 in their 24 yard line. Held scoreless so far. Andrew Harris is cut down by Weldon Brown, who returns to this Edmonton lineup. Real good run support there from the short side halfback, Weldon Brown fighting off the block, stepping up to take on Harris right at the line of scrimmage. 